Okay, as you can see in today's video, I'm gonna be going over charging an inductor and I'm gonna give a simple explanation of current voltage and time constant. I'll also make a video about how we do some simple calculations for charging inductor, which you can link to in the upper right hand corner of this video. Now we're gonna be talking in this video about the current through the inductor, the voltage across the inductor, and the time constant. Before we get to the time constant, you just notice that these two graphs for the current and the voltage on the x-axis given time, but the time is actually given in time constants, one, two, three, four, five time constant, this symbol tau, the weak letter tau is the symbol for the time constant, same thing for the voltage, one, two, three, four, five time constants. And you'll notice that the current is increasing, or you'll know the current increases through the inductor with respect to time. So the y-axis here, the current is given as a percentage of the eventual maximum current. The voltage across the inductor is re reducing, decreasing with respect to time. So on the y-axis here, we have the voltage as a percentage of the initial maximum voltage. Okay, and as I said, the time is given time constant. What's the time constant? Well, the time constant kind of gives us a sense for how long it takes the current to reach its maximum or how long it takes the voltage to come back to zero, the voltage across the inductor. The time constants for RL circuits is calculated as the inductance of the inductor divided by the resistance of the resistor. Remember for RC circuits, just R times C. This is L divided by R. That means that if in a particular case we have a, for example, a 15 Henry inductor and a 10 ohm resistor, the time constants for that case would be 1.5 seconds. What does that mean with respect to our graphs and our current and our voltage? Well, it means that after one time constant, that the current will reach 63%, 63.2% of the eventual maximum. After two time constants, the current will be 86.5, three time constants, 95, four time constants, 98.2, and five time constants. We kind of consider the current to be at its maximum is 99.3%. Same thing for the voltage. After one time constant, the voltage will be 36.8% of the original maximum and will reduce. And then by five time constants, it will be 0.7% of the original maximum voltage. Okay, now if we have a different combination of inductor and resistor, so for example, if we have a 5 ohm resistor, then the time constant in that case would be 3 seconds. And that means after 3 seconds or after one time constant, the current will be at 63.2% instead of after 1.5 seconds. So the time constant is different for each pair of inductor and resistor. And in this case we have, it's 1.5 seconds. All right. Now, this is the equation we use to actually calculate the current with respect to time. And this is the equation we use to calculate the voltage with respect to time. For current, the current with respect to time is simply the maximum current, which we calculate, you can determine by V divided by R, using Ohm's law, times 1 minus E which is a mathematical constant 2.72, 2.718, raise the power of minus T times R, resistance to the resistor, divided by L, the inductance of the inductor. Now remember, in a general form, this is minus T divided by the time constant. Well, the time constant is L over R. So we simplify that, we get minus T times R divided by L. And to calculate the voltage with respect to time, it's simply the voltage of the battery, because that's our initial maximum voltage times E raised to the same power minus T times R over L, okay? So now let's look a little bit more carefully at each of those graphs and see how we get these percentages, 63.2, 86.5, and so on, from this equation of the current with respect to time. Now we're gonna use the same example we had, 15 Henry's, 10 ohm, gives us a time constant of 1.5 seconds. E, as I said, is a mathematical constant, 2.718. So let's plug those values into this equation. We would have one minus, and we want to calculate first for one time constant. Well, one time constant, the time for one time constant is 1.5 seconds. And then the time constant is also 1.5. So we get E raised to the power of minus 1.5 divided by 1.5, which is also e raised to the power of minus 1. So now if we calculate the value of this term, 
and multiply that by i max, you'll see that 1 minus e to the minus 1 is 0 0.632, or the 63.2% times the maximum means we'll be at 63.2% of the eventual maximum. Now for two time constants, that would be two time constants, the time for two time constants is three seconds divided by the time constant. So this would be three seconds, but still divided by 1.5. So this would be minus two. One minus E to the minus two is 86.5 or 0 0.865. After three time constants, it would be 0 0.95 or 95%. After four time constants, 0 0.982 or 98.2% of the maximum. And after five time constants, 99.3% of the maximum. So that's where those values come from, from this equation. And in the first case, one time constant is minus one, two, three, four, and minus five for five time constants. So that's where we get these values for that graph using the time constant. Now we can do the same thing or similar thing with the voltage. So this time it's not one minus, it's simply E raised to the power of minus T over RL. After one time constant, the time for one time constant is 1.5 seconds. So we get the same thing, minus 1.5 divided by 1.5, E to the minus one. E to the minus one is 0 0.368, which is 36.8% of the initial voltage, which is the voltage of the battery, voltage of the source. And we can do the same thing for two time constants, e to the minus two, e to the minus three, e to the minus four, and five time constants, e to the minus five is 0 0.007, which is 0.7% of the original maximum voltage across the inductor, okay? So that's how we get those values and those graphs for the current through the inductor and the voltage across the inductor. Let me just summarize that in this table. One, two, three, four, five time constants. This is the current as a percentage of the eventual maximum, 63.2. After five time constants, we're at 99.5. That's kind of when we think of the current as reaching its maximum. Mathematically, it never gets to 100%. Same thing for the voltage, except the voltage is reducing. One time constant is reduced to 36.8%. After three time constants, it's at 5%. After five time constants, it's at 0.7%. That's when we kind of assume it's back to zero because mathematically with the equation, it never gets back to zero. And then sometimes we want to know when is the current at 50% of the eventual maximum and when is the voltage going to be reduced by 50%. And that is just about at 0 0.7 time constants. Okay, so thank you very much for watching. I hope you found it helpful. We went over the current through the inductor, the voltage across the inductor with respect to time, and how we calculate the time constant. So thanks for watching. I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, please do all the following three things. Subscribe to my channel, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Give me a thumbs up for this video and leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. We'll see you in the next video.